In this week's episode, we discuss topics that may be triggering to some listeners. If you believe you or another individual is in crisis, contact your doctor immediately. Seek medical attention in an emergency room or call 911. The latest in the gayest podcast is intended for listening by adult members of the LGBTQIA plus community and their allies. Discussions may contain material not suitable for folks under the age of 18. Listener discretion is advised. This week, we discuss the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. And we take a moment to talk about our mental health. All this and more on the latest and the gayest. Oh my goodness. Wow. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to this devilicious fierceness. Slay queen, the boots house down. Um, yes, I'm just welcome e- back to the podcast. I'm just using every gay lingo word in my repertoire. All of what's got a blade on the table. Yeah. We, we can leave no room for confusion. But you know what, like, the name of this show is? The latest and the gayest? It is. The, it is very much the latest and the gayest. And my name is Alex. And I'm Josh. And welcome to our show. Yep, here it is. <laughs> it is. It is indeed a show. Quick question, who's older? You are. Damn it, okay, never mind. Yeah, you are you were, you turned 21 before I did. That's true, that's Cause, true. Yeah, because I remember many a times when we would go to, shout out to Ego Providence. Hell yeah. I remember many a times before I was legally 21 years old, uh, Josh was, we'd go see like the Thursday night drag shows mm-hmm. and you would get nice and liquored up and you're tiny little bladder oh my god yeah i have the tiniest little petite little little, i I just need to pee all the time when i'm drinking the most demure little bladder here's the thing too though i would get like plaster drunk before i was 21 and i'd go there so like that's not the best i yeah i like you pregame before i pregame yeah well I'd, i'd have uh friends who will not be named for legal reasons uh be like hey can you like buy me like a bottle of southern comfort and they'd be like hell yeah dog and then i'd drink like half of it and then oh I'd... you were a southern comfort drinker uh i drink a lot of things i drink a lot of brandy i drink a lot of tequila you're a classy gal uh you've got like brandies like there's some exp- like we a lot of the brandy that we sell at the store that i work at that's some like expensive shit yeah but the thing we'll see i, I would rather go like like ooh, like blackberry brandy and you know i'd have some of that before uh, i go out yeah or, some like or there are times where i'd like take a bottle of cranberry juice drink half of it and then fill the rest up with vodka okay and i would i remember I, I, when i you know dropped out of school um i lived close enough that oh i actually didn't live close enough that i could walk but i did it anyways yeah which walking like a good like 30 minutes after you get like pissed drunk yeah from the gay bar is like kind of fun and i like yeah peed in public so many times yes you have i have yes so many ways but, in, um, in many drive throughs too oh my god i remember when, a lot of drive throughs i remember i think we, this is something that you and my friend marty shout out to marty have experienced where like i don't want to go to the taco bell drive through after we'd go out mm-hmm. and i'd be like wait don't go through the drive through yet i gotta pee <laughs> yeah i remember literally this is one time i swear to god we were in line mm-hmm. at the Taco Bell drive through because it was, we had just finished, you know, doing our thing and we were in line because we needed to get some like greasy food to, to sober this little mm-hmm. fucker up. And we, I had like just entered like the line because it was, you know, it was late at night, but that's ironically, you know, most of the time when Taco Bell is like the busiest. Mm-hmm. So we were in line and I we just gotten there and then Josh was basically like hold on one second and then he just like get, jumps out the car fully just gets out of the out of the passenger seat stumbles trips and falls out of the car goes literally just runs across the street to this like abandoned building pisses like in the corner and then comes back and jumps back in like just in time for us to place our order oh yeah oh yeah it okay. was I gotta go and I gotta go I'm it like, was giving very much deep of fierceness. And, like, I remember, like, when we were at Ego, I'd be, like, we'd be, I, I was always in the front row because I was tipping. Um, tip the girls. Always tip the girls. Yeah. Always at least a dollar. I try. Um, yeah. Unless I'm poor that week, which happened <laughs> very often. We're in college. What do you expect? Yeah, that's true. Well, my, he- my money my money is at a at an all-time low during that point in my life. Yeah, it's it was pretty rough. Yeah. So, uh, But anyways, I remember, like, when there was, like, banter, like, in between the two numbers, I'd be like, Alex hold my drink i gotta pee 
I'd run to the bathroom, you know, go to the bathroom quick and then come back. But it was oh, fun. Yeah. I, I'll never regret it. I, I wish I still had the, my body could still handle alcohol like it used to, which I sound like an old man. I'm only like 23. Oh, yeah. But even the time frame from 18 to 23. I'm 22 and I'm already starting to like, my my body is not able to, to process, you know, things the way that it used to. Mm-hmm. I, I, I very, like, I, you know, like the young, young lad that I once was, I could down like six Seagram's escapes, a couple of shots of vodka and, you know, just a lot in Mm -hmm. one particular night and then only wake up like half buzzed. Now, if I drink even like one margarita plastered, I will wake up with nice headache. Oh yeah, yeah, and well, my see, my body is just like, did you really need to do that? And I was like, yes. It was just the up. one margarita. Shut the hell up! But th- that's the thing too. It's like my body is like, there are consequences now in this point in my life, which is you know unfortunate because I like to I like to go in, I like to go hard. Yeah, I don't like being tipsy. I don't like being buzzed. I want to be drunk. It's fun. Yes, which uh, do it safely, kids yes. out there. Drink responsibly. Do it legally. I, I work for a liquor store, so I'm kind of like required to say that. Oh. But I mean, it, to an extent, I, you know, I sell liquor to people. So, but you sell legal uh, liquor to legal responsible. Adults. Yes, legal drinking adults over the age of 21. Which honestly, if I didn't have that one friend, I don't know how I would have gone about getting liquor because they really make. Oh, it same. Fun. Which I will. I remember. I tried to get. I tried to get liquor the night before my birthday. And they wouldn't give it to me. Really? They were like, "No, you gotta you, t- tomorrow." Yes, but tonight, no. That is. Like, and then I hear about people that just walk in at like eighteen. And I'm like, "Hey, they, they never, they never ID me." So, oh I'm yeah. Like, oh, hello. One of the things that I love is when newly like somebody who it. I don't know if like it it truly is, but I've gotten there's. I remember there's this one time somebody came in. This like gaggle of gals came in Mm -hmm. and one of the girls, they were, they picked out a few things like some white claws, I think some vodka and then like one other item. And the girl, we were cashing out their products and they were like talking about how, oh, it's my friend's uh, 21st birthday. And I was like, oh, hey, congratulations. Happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Can I see your ID? And they were like, we just, we just told you she's 21. And I was like, yeah, but like you're 21 now. So now I get to I get to card you. It's fun, right? And they were like, uh, uh, yeah, 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 definitely. Um, you know what? I think I actually left it in my car. Um, let me just go do that real oh, quick. Oh, God. All of them went out and they never came back. Did they think that since their friend was 21 that... Well, I don't even know if their friend was 21. I think they just wanted... They think that they could like pull a fast one on they me. They could like buy into the hype. Yeah, because exactly, they yeah. tell me like, hey, our friend is 21. And I'm like, oh, that's great. But now here's the thing. If you are giving me a reason to ask for your ID, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So don't, don't think that I'm stupid. That's the thing. Oh, that's so stupid. Ugh. Like you, you literally just gave me a reason to ask for your ID. Uh-huh. So now I'm going to ask for your ID. So don't get surprised when I do so. And you're like, oh, but, but I just said, that's not how it works, Mary. Mm-hmm. That is not, it is not giving diva fierceness. It is not, unfortunately. I was just, I was, like, I was like, my friend's like swearing up and down that this place didn't card. And I was like, you know, I'll just try you know what, uh, I'll just get like a bottle of champagne, just, you know, so, ooh, my 21st birthday. I don't think I even really did anything that night. I think I was just out by myself. Yeah. Because I was working here probably, it was like a Wednesday or some dumb shit. And my friend's like, wow, I've been underage for years and they never not once even thought. And maybe I just had like a young face. Yeah. Because at that time I was, sh- I had to shave mm. my face for work, so. Yeah, I. I mean, now I don't get carded at all. They're no. like, eh, eh, It was sure. so, you know, it was so funny. I, my 21st birthday was kind of in like, it was in the midst of the pandemic. It was Mm -hmm. like in the height. It was, Uh, it was in like the height of the pandemic. So obviously I didn't get to do anything crazy. Um, But when I did take my first legal trip to the liquor store, I I went to this like local place that was like about like a mile or so down the couple of miles down the road from my apartment, uh, my senior, senior year apartment. And I bought, I think, like a six pack of Smirnoff ice and then like two other things just, you know, for shits and giggles. Mm -hmm. And 
they fully did not card me. That's disappointing. And I can't tell if it was because because I had my mask on and I'm like, do I look old enough like with my mask on or like I mean, I will, you know, masks um, have definitely made it a little bit more difficult to like figure that kind of stuff out, but I will gonna, say Oh, we're going to take a quick break and I'm going to tell you why they might feel older. That's a fair point. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. And we're back. So uh, let's get into to... For some queer quandaries. <laughs> All right. So this week has been... Eventful. It's been a bit of a doozy. And uh, we're we're gonna have a little bit of a longer queer quandaries today because it has uh, it's really been something. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Let's get into this week's top stories. Oh yeah. So obviously, as we all know, there's recently been an attack on Ukraine invasion. Yeah. Yes. Um, on Thursday, February twenty fourth. Russian forces launched an invasion on the country of Ukraine, sending troops into the ex-Soviet Union from three fronts and firing missiles on several locations near the capital of Kiev. According to CNN, the missile strikes started around 5 a.m. near the city's capital. The The country's capital. Yeah, the country's capital. As well as reported use of long-range artillery against the northern city of Kharkiv near the Russian border. Uh, Before daylight, the strikes continued to spread across the central and eastern parts of Ukraine. People in the nearby cities of Odessa, most of the targets were military bases, but there was clearly substantial damage to several surrounding cities. Videos have already started to surface of apartment blocks that have been severely damaged due to the long-range artillery attacks. Around 7 a.m., air raid sirens were sounded across Kiev and the western city of leave not long afterwards a single unidentifiable plane roared above the capital city later that day around 11 30 ukrainian leader Zelensky made a televised address which he said russia attacked ukraine in quote a cunning way and compared him to german dictator uh during world war ii adolf hitler mm-hmm. over the course of the afternoon ukrainian officials uh fought back with reports of more than 40 soldiers and 10 civilians being killed, not even before 12.45 p.m. Later that day, Ukrainian officials confirmed that Russian forces had overtaken the nuclear power plant in the city of Chernobyl. The White House condemned Russia over the credible reports that civilian staff of the Chernobyl power plant in the northern city of Ukraine had been taken hostage, saying, quote, We are outraged by credible reports that Russian soldiers are currently holding staff of the Chernobyl facilities hostage. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki Psaki, said, quote, This unlawful and dangerous hostage taking, which could upend the routine civil efforts required to maintain and protect the nuclear waste facilities, is obviously incredibly alarming and greatly concerning. We condemn it and we request their release. Uh, Thousands of people have already fled their homes and more are continuing to do so as time passes. In a response to these attacks, President Biden has announced stricter sanctions on Russia and is currently contemplating a cyber attack, which would take out Russia's internet and electricity. On Friday, it was announced by UK Chief of Defense Intelligence Sir Jim Hocknell that Russian forces, quote, Russian forces continue to advance on two axes towards Kyiv. Their objective is to encircle the capital to secure control of the population and change the regime. The British intelligence official also noted that Russia, quote, continues to conduct strikes across Ukraine with a con- concentrated series of strikes. Ukrainian armed forces continue to offer strong resistance, forcing, uh, focusing on the defense of key cities throughout Ukraine. However, according to Ukrainian officials, some of the Ukrainian staff of the U.S. embassy located in Kiev have recently reported, quote, there is no safe place in Ukraine anymore. As the attacks waged on later Saturday morning, Kremlin website was being targeted by cyber attacks. According to CNN, the hacking group Anonymous has claimed responsibility for those attacks. 
And this is all that we know as of today. Uh, so the date that we are recording this episode, Saturday, February 25th, uh, 26th, 26. Yes. I guess I'm blind. It is. Yeah. This is all the latest updates that we have seen. And things can change for sure. They, they are changing rapidly. It can escalate or I don't see them de-escalating anytime soon, but no, but things can change. <laughs> And they most likely will be pretty intense. So please uh, keep the people of Ukraine uh, in your thoughts and prayers. Of course, absolutely. Also, according to USA Today, Texas Governor Greg Abbott has directed state child welfare agencies to consider, quote, gender transitioning procedures as child abuse. This comes after the state failed to pass legislature attacking trans rights and trans individuals last year. Aji Perez from the Civil Liberties Union of Texas told NBC News, this is a distraction from a 2015 indictment on charges of security fraud and his investigation by the FBI for bribery and abuse of office. Also, this past Tuesday, I believe, the ex-head of the Texas Energy Grid testified that he, Greg Abbott, was um he directed the energy grid of texas to keep prices at the absolute maximum cap during the um winter storm blackout that happened last month oh right yeah so he's really um deflecting from a lot of the uh nastiness that he's been doing yeah luckily uh the district attorneys of dallas austin san antonio sugarland and corpus christi have refused to abide wild shit yeah okay yeah, he's a he's a generally nasty man. But in uh, I believe in the upcoming year, both Greg Abbott and uh, somebody else I, I'm blanking on the name, but mm-hmm. Greg Abbott is going to be up for re-election. Yes. So if you are if you you know in Texas. not a, if you are living in Texas and you are finally you you do not want Greg Abbott anymore. Which I don't think anybody does, but well, Ted Cruz is still in office, so yeah, that's he's uh, again one of those people that I don't, I don't see how anyone likes him. No, I don't think anybody does, but but he's still here somehow. Greg Abbott is going to be up for re-election, uh, I believe, in the coming year. So people in Texas, if you are listening to this show, which hey, hey um, both of you. <laughs> register to vote, register to vote, register to vote, register to vote, and get him the hell out of government because mm-hmm. god i hate his guts yeah but we but, have some brighter news yeah right? onto some lighter news um this thursday amy schneider who has recently made history as the top winning woman and top winning transgender contestant in jeopardy history posted a photo to twitter announcing her engagement to her fiance genevieve saying quote i have an announcement genevieve is no longer my girlfriend She's my fiancé. Hell yeah. I couldn't be happier or more proud to spend my life with the very best person in the entire world. Schneider has won 40 consecutive games, second only to current Jeopardy host Ken Jennings, who won 74 straight games in 2003. She eventually lost last month to Roan Talsma, a librarian from Chicago. Amy is also the first trans contestant to qualify for the Tournament of Champions, which will be held this fall. Uh, In this tournament, uh, the season's top 15 winners will be competing against each other to battle it out and see who is the top contender of them all. Hell yeah. So congratulations, Amy. We stand. We do stand. We stand. Congratulations on your engagement. Also, uh, Kentaji Brown Johnson is poised to become the first black woman to serve on the Supreme Court. Slay queen. Very, she's very cool. She's done a lot of cool things. Um, she, uh, she blocked the White House from keeping documents about January 6th from being released. Right. Um, so she was like, no, y'all can't do that. Um very famously she also she blocked trump from blocking the white house council for um i can't think of any words right now <laughs> it's okay it's okay i'm not good at like reading it's okay. off of the script so it's don't like, worry just saying out there if it's it's not, it's not crunchy because i don't care it's crunchy because i'm not good at reading <laughs> she's queen. done some cool shit yeah. yeah no we're we're very excited um but you know i think it's gonna be i i was talking about this with uh my dad the other day mm-hmm. and he was I think it's going to be really interesting how the uh, the Republicans are going to like 
try to cock block this like as far as they can. I don't think they can. Because like I the thing is, I know I, I just have a feeling they're going to try. Well, but I do know that there are a few key Republicans that are going to. I don't know if they need a majority vote because he pass. she's being she's being nominated. I'm, she's replacing Justice Breyer. She, Oh, okay. I thought I th- she, oh she's not replacing um RBG's seat. Um, RBG's already been replaced by uh Oh, oh, case. right. Right, 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 right. Duh, 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 duh. Um, yeah, that Amy, Amy 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 Conehead Ferret. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Amy Coney Barrett. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't think of her name either. But no, uh Kataji, she um O'Brien, which it keeps it, it maintains the balance of yeah. conservative and liberal yeah people it's, it's uh which is good yeah well doesn't actually no it, it, it's it's not balanced at all right now it's very skewed and uh, conservative yeah. but yeah she said and she's um i i saw an article on the advocate talking about how she's had like a really great record with like the lgbtq community of course and also and like she's Trump's oh. yeah she's done like a lot of work with she's with the queer community tried, yeah yeah oh yeah definitely the case but she also um she was unfortunately overruled by higher courts but um mm. it was now she will be the highest court so hell yeah it. um she tried to block trump from like fast tracking deportations but that got overruled unfortunately yeah and also she trump was attempting to like limit the power of like government unions oh really and she tried to block it but it was overruled by higher courts eh. Eh. pretty pretty you know not good but hopefully soon uh, she'll be able to do some pretty good work yeah um i mean honestly he- here's the thing that i'm not not worried not worried about but like worried about the the conservatives got amy coney barrett in there in like less than five seconds oh yeah so yeah because they it it was i mean this was also like i forget this was this was kind of like in the midst of the election. It was. So I, re- I remember when this happened there, I saw a lot of videos on TikTok that were <laughs> talking about um, Amy's kind of like less than stellar record. Less than stellar record. With... And also this is a very confirming a uh, justice this quickly is also like uh, that quickly was not heard of. Before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Trump and. And, and they, they were like they they refused to confirm Merrick Garland until the no. 2016 election, which is yeah. ridiculous because I think they had like a whole whole ass year. Yeah, I remember when Obama was still in administration. Um, he tried to nominate. I think so. I think he tried Merrick to nominate. Garland. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. You are correct. And it's <laughs> it, it was see I'm, I'm I know my yeah. facts when and, I'm talking about. It. Yeah, I can't, and I can't they spit them out. But um. But then like. Because I think at the time there were so many like Republican. The Senate in, was the majority. The, yeah, the ma- Senate was majority Republican. So they just cock blocked him mm-hmm. like the entire time, and then when he left, they were like, "He didn't get anything done. What the hell?" Oh no! Yeah, I'm like, mm, okay. That's a, uh, again, uh, what's his fucking name? Uh, that nasty slug looking man that wrote- Mitch McConnell. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he made it his mission to like not let Obama get anything he wanted done done. Yeah, the human human personification but, of a melted marshmallow. Like I was saying, something I'm worried about is that I fear that Democrats don't have the same drive to just get shit done. They cling to bipartisanship even when it's not reciprocated. Yeah. So I'm concerned that they're gonna let the Republicans draw out. Yeah. There's the, and there's you know I I'm I'm registered. Uh, for voting, I'm registered under the Democratic Party. However, there's I do not vibe with half these. Hosts. There's been some. There have been a few administrations, presidential administrations, where the the economy has done a lot better under Republican. There's. Uh, what do you mean by that? Because I think I've seen. I saw it somewhere saying that like I, uh... I, apparently like under i forget was it like under bush or something that Mm -hmm. the the economy like actually didn't do too horrible well it depends on how you define the the, like the stock market oh yeah hey if if the stock market's doing well then they can say the economy's doing yeah look just for the record i am not a political expert yeah so i would like to say that don't take don't take what what we say too seriously the economy and the stock market doing well does not necessarily carry over to us doing well no that's like that yeah um maybe some big corporations were doing well maybe some yeah that's uh, that's true as well 
that's you got you have to know it's also like who yeah you have to take things with a grain of salt it's never as simple as oh the economy's doing well it's like okay well who's doing who's doing well in this economy yeah is it predominantly like you know rich white people that yeah. are doing well because we're just scraping by yeah because that was like wasn't in 2000 i forget was it in 2008 that was like that massive like recession, recession. yeah that was in 2008 yes. right yes okay but yeah I, well, the thing, it, well, that was Obama's first term, right? Yeah, he, yeah. And I think it's, I think that gets dumped on him, but yeah, like, like we said with, uh, with Trump and with Biden. Um, oh yeah, it's we, gonna take more than a year. We are still, quote unquote, I would say, uh we we still have a lot. Our economy today is still very influenced by Trump because of the policies he put in place and what yep. he was doing. Yeah, we are not free of Trump's economy yet. No. So when that recession hit in 2008, it, 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 Bush was not like exempt of all, what's the word, uh, fault and crime. Mm-hmm. Like his legislation and his administration had a part in that. Yeah. So like, I, I just want to dispel this thing that like, everyone just makes more money under the Republicans. I want to say like, not, I was, I was not. A lot of the Trump. big, I was, a lot of the uh, big, you know, corporations. Yeah. They they do very well under the the Republican administrations, which you know for obvious reasons. But it's that thing. Uh, uh, it's the Reaganomics is not real. Trickle down economics is not real. Just because <laughs> if I work at Dunkin' Donuts, and Dunkin' Donuts made two point eight billion. I, we we literally are seeing this right now. Yeah. So many corporations have made so much money over the pandemic, and like more, like because yeah. of the pandemic, they've had they have and made their, more money. Their and employees are not, are not being paid a livable wage. Yes, they are not. They yeah. are not reaping any of the benefits. I of which can so, speak from experience well, that, to that. So, so what I'm saying, like, just because the quote unquote economy is doing well, does not mean that we are doing well. No, that's true. That's true. And on that, we are going to take a quick break because I'm going to, you know, go face the quarter and cry and pee myself. And I need to drink some coffee. And we're back with a new segment we're going to call Pussy Pop Culture, where we talk about some pop culture shit that we feel like talking about this week. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Sorry, I've been like... And what we do feel like talking about this week is... Now, I know... I know you are not up to date on this, but yeah, you know the so the TV show Euphoria. Everyone's been watching it. Get 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 the people who don't know. It's for those, y- and that's like the thing. If I was to try to explain Euphoria to somebody who hasn't watched Euphoria, it would take ages. Okay, well, because there's like because the thing is there's so many like subplots like focused around like the main plot of the story that mm-hmm. like. Because the sh- the main character of the show, it arguably is is Rue Zendaya's character, and it's about you know kind of like her her struggle with her drug addiction. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there's like a whole storyline with like Maddie, uh, and she's she has like a unhealthy relationship with this guy Nate Jacobs, who's like an abusive asshole, and but like you know he buys her stuff and he treats her like moderately well so she like continues to come back to him even though he's a horrible person mm-hmm. um love is blind and yeah and like the second season like by the by the end of the first season they break up but then during the second season cassie played by sydney sweeney who oh love sydney sweeney she's mm-hmm. um she's also i think she's i i could, could be wrong on this i think she came out as bi a little while ago or bi or pan or um something like that but she because she uh she plays cassie on the show and mm-hmm. in the second season cassie like starts hooking up with nate even though like because technically maddie and nate had been broken up for a little bit but you know it's like it's maddie's ex and there was like a lot of history there and cassie was like but they they weren't together like that's not like okay yeah that doesn't okay. that doesn't matter diva but and then there's like cassie's sister lexi who which okay. aren't they in high school too yes they're all in high school and the oh my god if you've probably seen like some memes on the internet about how like the outfits that these kids are wearing like you'll they'll be like you know just going to like my, yeah yeah just going to like algebra 2 to to learn the pythagorean theorem me and my waiting are, for you high. yeah and they're in like chat like assless chapped leather pants like a see-through mesh tank top braids down to like their butt like it's insane it's fierce 
the house down boots mama god, oh god. yeah S- slay queen hunting they look cool yeah they look amazing but like god in heaven it is it's but anyway um what, what aspect did you want to hone in on this week? so this so the most recent episode of euphoria has been catching a lot of attention because in this so throughout the second season the character lexi who is uh, cassie's sister has been writing this play and oh that's why the i've seen all the memes like is this play about us yeah that's like the the Mm -hmm. the joke but um so she's been writing this play the entire season and she never like verbally addressed what it was going to be about it was just called quote our life Mm -hmm. but it was it was pretty obvious that she was writing it about you know kind of like the events that have been happening in euphoria and like everything that's because she's Lexi has always been she's kind of always been described as like the character who's never like in the main plot. She's always kind of just watching. a side character. Yeah. She's just like watching everything go down. Quick question. Yeah. Do we know how far away this episode is from the uh, end of the season? The season finale is actually on Sunday. That makes so much sense. OK. Yeah. Do you know what this reminds me of? Mm. If I can remember Avatar The Last Airbender and the Ember Island players. You're going to hate me for this, but I've never seen Avatar. I quit the podcast. I know. Oh, well, actually, I watched. So I know it's on Netflix and I, I forced myself to like watch. Oh, that is like you. I watched I'm like so three fourths of the first season and then I just kind of forgot about it. Okay. Read me. Drag me. Drag yes, her. Yes, drag her. I yeah. know. I know. Did you watch it? So, so you get that reference, right? I'm talking to the techno producer. Is that was that okay? Never mind. I'm so because basically in Avatar, there's like a season. They they basically use they basically all the main characters watch a play written about them, and they it's basically a series recap. Yeah. Um, and that's probably why they that's I think it's a very clever way to like recap the series before the final episode. Oh yeah. So and, like, hey, like here's all here's everything that's gonna go into like the final episode yeah like uh, it, it, it's cool yeah no and it's um, like but this, anyways keep going yeah the play like it encompasses even like everything that's happened during like the first season oh see that that's uh, that's exactly like the ember island players and like i hope oh, god oh my god i'll get there anyways. i'll get there one day but in the play there's a scene where they poke fun at jacob Elordi's character nate jacobs Mm -hmm. you know the abusive like asshole and in this scene the guy like one of the guys in the play it's like this massive group dance number Mm -hmm. where the guy who's playing nate in in the play he him and like a bunch of like shirtless gym bros are like all in these big like gold spandex and there's this like kind of little like mock gym set up and I'm not joking when I say they do probably the most homoerotic dance number to holding out for a hero. Interesting. That I have ever seen. And it is one of, it is the best thing I've ever seen in my entire life. The only thing gay is it, they, Tandy and yeah, Pre jumping they, from the ceiling. <laughs> they seriously, like, there's like a whole part in the song where they literally just like they get behind one another and then they just start humping each other. They are literally just like humping each other to the music. They and it's know in, their audience. And it's incredible. <laughs> and like at the very end, they start lowering like a punching bag down from the ceiling in which, you know, you don't think twice about it for a second. But then the the Nate Jacobs character, uh, he like runs up to the punching bag with these two like exercise balls Uh and then he positions them in such a fashion where it looks like a penis and then at the very end the giant punching bag penis shoots a massive confetti cum shot out of the top of the thing and then like also all the guys are standing like on these boxes and they have like confetti poppers and they so where was this play debut was this at the in a high school yeah God. And they shoot out their confetti poppers in like a jerking off like motion. So it looks like they're like coming on the audience and it's fucking incredible. Does that have any relevance to the plot? Or was it all just kind no, of fan but service? Like, so the whole thing is like they just Lexi just wanted to like 
because there's been like this running joke i guess that people think nate jacobs is secretly gay okay and she like she took that and she ran with it and she Uh was like have you you seen that you heard that tiktok audio where it's like i saw gay so i said gay that ain't (laughs) bullying that's an astute observation. Yes, yeah. yes, that's from uh, Bas- yeah. the Poondocks. Yeah, yeah, basically that's what happened. But yeah, Lexi, she like she took it and she ran with it. And I swear to God, it was one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life. But there are some people out there who are saying that this whole scene was a little homophobic. I can see that. Which I first off, the character of Nate Jacobs. He's not even gay. Well, there there is something to be said about um, engaging in conjecture about someone's sexuality is pretty... I, I can't get with that. It's something... Uh, it's uh, It kind of ties into my complicated feelings about Harry Styles. Yeah. Because part of why he's so popular is that... I don't know if that's part of why he's popular, but... Uh, People engaging in like, is he gay? But he also like acts very, you know, feminine. Yeah. And I think there's something homophobic about like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I I, I understand that. Also, but... but also Harry Styles be looking crazy sometimes. Yeah. The thing is though, like there, it's just it's... I, I get why le- people would be upset that so that they leaned into it. But also at the same time, this is like, I mean, I I haven't watched it for yet. Yeah, full it is meant to be like comedic satire. Um, which also, which I'm trying to find, figure out what, where's the satire coming from? Where's what's, which, what's to, the quote unquote joke? Like that, that Nate Jacobs is gay. That he, I, 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 so I see why I think the delivery of the joke is pretty entertaining, but I think the joke itself is a little problematic. Like this guy might be gay. Ha 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 ha. Cause, uh, uh, yeah. A gayness isn't really a joke. No, yeah, it, no. I, 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 I see where that yeah. thing might be coming from. I, th- I think at this point, everybody's just like they've grown such a hatred for Nate Jacobs that they're just like, I don't even give a shit. Fair enough. Fair like, enough. He's just such a dick. Well, I think the thing, uh, the thing too is, um, I do not. I mean, again, I, I actually not. I'm not gonna. I don't know a whole lot about this show, so I'll, I'll probably. What's is what's it on HBO Max? Yeah. Oh, see, I'm not paying money. Yeah. I don't know, if, I, if I can find it for free on the internet, I I'll... think you can probably find it on like one, two, three movies or something. Oh, Ruin my computer. Yeah. Um, for sure. Uh, you know, I'll we I'll look into it. We'll take a quick break. And we're back. Yes, we certainly are. And this week, we're gonna take a little mental health moment. Mm-hmm. We're gonna talk about mental, mental health. health. <laughs> we did that at the same time. Oh, we did. Because... Oh my god, I love how in sync we are. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, also, I want to preface this. Blew up. I want to preface this by saying so, we are not experts. No, and you know we are not therapists. We are not mental health professionals. So, if you are in need of help with your mental health, please contact uh, the appropriate. Yes, we this, expert. This episode is not sponsored by BetterHelp. Yeah, no, not at all. We don't have any sponsors no, yet. But no, if you're looking to sponsor, we're not there yet. But yeah, so anyway. You know who I want to get sponsors from? Who do you want to get? I do not want like BetterHelp or like fucking uh, Uber Eats or something like that. I want like the local, the local people. Oh yeah. I want Bim Bob's Crab Shack to sponsor us. I will, I will gladly reach out to, <laughs> I'll uh, reach out to. Um, Bim Bob's Crab Shack. I will, yeah, Bim, Bim Bob. Bi- say it. Bimini Bamboolash. Oh my God, Bimini Bob. <laughs> Bimini Bamboolash is Crab Shack. Yep. Um, anyway, mental health. What does that mean to you? I mean, I you know I, I've I've struggled with anxiety and depression mm-hmm. for a, a long time, and people I I feel like I get kind of a rep that like not everybody really thinks about it so much because they're like you're you know the the classic um, answer. What do you have to be depressed about? Oh yeah. Why why are you sad? What are you sad about? Yeah, well, Mary, it's that that's not what it is. Like I remember uh during my uh junior year of college, this was like kind of uh a little bit before the pandemic started. Um I started therapy and I remember when I was first talking about it, I was on I remember I had a, I was on the phone one time with my aunt on my dad's side of the family. And I was talking about how, you know, I had just started therapy Mm -hmm. and she, she was like 
concerned because you know she was like why are you in therapy is something wrong like did something happen Mm -hmm. and i'm like i mean a lot technically yeah a lot technically yes but there's been a lot but i'm not you know i'm not going i didn't go into therapy to in response to extreme trauma yeah to like you know i when the reason i chose to start therapy was just to like help get my mental health kind of under control Mm -hmm. because that's the thing i feel like people they hear therapy and they're like oh my god like did your grandma die in a violent car crash that also killed your mother yeah and it's like well no but i still got stuff they they they, they, yeah people really treat therapy or they see people going to therapy and they think they, they kind of assume the worst it has to be they think people who go to therapy it has to be like in response to like some big tragic event Mm -hmm, exactly which you can that it's not it's not that those things happen i certainly hope that you get the mental and emotional help you need exactly but you you don't need something that atrocious doesn't need to happen for you to yeah it doesn't need to be that horrific of criteria to start therapy Mm -hmm. if you like you know like i said i've been i've been struggling with anxiety and depression for a long time and it it's always been, you know, it's been a constant thing. It's been a constant battle. It's mm-hmm. never like one. I, and, you know, I'm not on, I technically don't take any antidepressants, mm-hmm. but it's always been like a battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't need to just like have some big horrific event happen in your life to be able to like sign up for therapy. You know, honestly, I kind of not practice what I preach here because I know I could definitely uh, benefit from something like therapy but something I, t- I told my boss once because um, I was basically kind of overwhelmed at work and something I told her was that like you know I'm really bad at asking for help I I will not ask for help until it's too late if yeah. that makes sense so I think maybe she's practicing what I'm preaching a little bit there because I don't know it's hard to me to like yeah you like... I will not re- I, I me myself I do not realize that I'm having a problem until it's boiled over until it's yeah, until it's too late. Until like you know the consequences of that are you know manifesting themselves. Yeah. Do you do you like have you struggled with any mental health problems? Um, I don't want to say for sure because I've never been to therapy. <laughs> I've never. <laughs> um, hey, I've never had the. I will. I kind of had the insurance, but I've never been comfortable. I was, the one thing with health insurance is that kind of scares me because I'm like I technically have it now, but I just don't know how to use it, and I'm very like hesitant to so i don't know i don't know how it even like fit therapy in my schedule which is like not good don't do that kids that's yeah um that's fair but also some part of me is like i feel like seeking therapy is like a dig against my parents or like the people in my life somehow does Mm. that make sense no i i understand that completely because again it's the things like well what do you need therapy for and it's like yeah the response to be like well kind of the shit you did is like i can't It, it feels like you're jabbing at them yeah which, which you know, I, you know, you don't. It's hard because sometimes you don't want to make them feel like they've done anything. You don't want to be feel like you're being mean. Yeah, and being like, "You did this to me. You were an awful parent, and I'm in this because of you." Yeah, and you don't want to. Fe- you you know, you want to. Be... I don't feel that way, and I don't think that's true. But no. also, I can't. How do I reconcile also these complicated things of like, okay, something I thought about the other day. Because kind of my approach to, like, quote-unquote therapy is I just kind of, like, I'll, like, think of something, and I'll just kind of think about it for a while. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, you, and I'll, you like, hang on to it for a while. Not even hang on. Well, not, I don't say hang on to it. So, like, basically, um, I'll take a feeling that I have, and basically I'll say, okay, why do I feel that way? Mm. So I'll, I'll give, like, a... I'll try, I'll try to think of, like, a tame example, not to put myself on blast. Um, Like, uh, I can't think of one, because it's all too deep. No. But yeah, I, I, I've like, one of the things that I kind of worked on in my, my therapy over the past couple of years was I, I do this and I still do, I still do this. I'm Mm -hmm. I'm trying not to, I've gotten better at it, but I'm, you know, I ask myself a lot of what if questions Uh and those are, they're, they're bad. They can be bad. Okay, so like, kind of like you, you, you're trying to find, do you use like the worst case scenario deal or? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm definitely, I can definitely, you know, sometimes be the type of person to like just naturally assume the worst about things. Okay. 
and my you know i've i've had a i've had an approach for a while that and this is um if if you've ever seen the spider-man um homecoming was that the most recent tom holland no it's no way home right 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 right, no way home fake fan i'm i'm what can i say i'm a batman gal um but so in the movie uh zendaya's character talks about how if you don't expect anything from Mm. the world then you will not be disappointed because if or if you just like expect the worst then 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 you were either right then that yeah then that way like if and i've i've thought that way I definitely, and there's sometimes I still do, you know, because mm-hmm. if you just, if you just expect the worst to happen that way, if the day isn't like a total crap shoot, you can kind of like chalk it up on the board as like a good day. A quote unquote win. But then yeah, I, I, to me that kind of like lowers your standards for like your quality of living a little bit. Yeah. Cause you're always expecting the worst. And also you, sp- I, I, I would think that you spend a lot of time, you spend too much time dwelling on the worst aspects and you then do not um, appreciate and relish in things that are better. Yeah. Which, I mean, I, I, that's your experience. I, I'm not going to try to be like, well, this is why. I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> to try to therapy you. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, but, yeah. It's, but, yeah. It, yeah. And I think, too, I, I, I know a thing for me, honestly, um, what I needed from me, because I was a depressed kid. I recently, um, uh, a friend of mine from high school went to, uh, came up to Boston for a baseball games like hey i'm in boston now i want to like go out for a drink and something i said to him was like i don't know if you know this or not but like i was like you know not a very happy kid like oh no josh everyone knew we all knew you were depressed you you were very clearly a sad kid i was like damn he he figured figured me out out. but also i think part of what i needed was just like space yeah um and i think that's definitely helped me a lot you know it's important to take there's you know i uh i was listening to a podcast recently from by one of my favorite youtubers emma chamberlain Mm -hmm. which oh my god if i had more time to talk about emma chamberlain i would spend hours talking about but we don't we don't have time okay so i was listening to one of her most recent episodes of her podcast anything goes which you can listen to on all pod major podcast streaming platforms and she talked about because she's you know a youtuber but she Mm -hmm. hasn't been posting on youtube recently and a lot of people were starting to like, you know, because she's taken a few breaks before, but eventually she's come back. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were wondering, like, hey, Emma, like, is this it? And she addressed some of that stuff on the most recent episode of her podcast. And she mm-hmm. was just talking about how it you just get so burnt out. You like you you're continually continuously working yourself to this point where every time you feel burnt out. You, you know, you take a little break and then you continue and then you feel burnt out again. But every burnout is worse than the one before it. And I can see that. Yeah, I can see because I think, too, at least for me, I am very dedicated to my work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm OK. I'm not gonna say that because I know people that I work with listen to yeah. this. I'm a, I'm a Virgo, but... so I'm very <laughs> I'm very like work oriented. I know I like to be, you know, scheduled. I'm a, I'm a scheduled gal. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, like. I have a hard time letting go of my responsibilities. I like my responsibilities. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yep. They, 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 I, I'm doing too much, but I like them. Yep. And it, I, I derive a lot of my self-worth from knowing I can do these things. Yeah. So when I, oh, they're kind of like going off topic. Um, I, I really push myself to do them. So, you know, it, the, the kind of break that I need is kind of like, uh, we recently took like a week off of work, which was really fun. But also like was traveling, and like traveling is like hot take. I don't think if you, if you travel somewhere, it's gonna not yield a very fruitful quote unquote break because like the act of traveling and the act of like doing things, you know. Yeah. To me, at least, I mean, at least for me and my field of work, I bake and I'm always working, so I just didn't really, yeah. I, I, I didn't yeah. get sufficient rest. But if yeah, if you're a workaholic, you know, like Josh and I, just remember it's it is okay to take a break, but it's not. It's. <laughs> I want to go back to work. But, but if you just you deserve you you do deserve a break. Mm-hmm. You may not think that you do, well, and you may think that you have to keep pushing and you have to keep going, or else you're going to let somebody down. But 
remember your self-worth and your mental health is more important at the end of the day. And I've had to learn this the hard way, Mm -hmm. like a lot. So just remember that it is okay to take a little bit of a break. Of course. And speaking of breaks, we will be doing that. (laughs) Yes, we will. And we're back. We're back. And thank you so much, Joshua, for joining me this week. Hitting me with the full name again. Um, of course, it's my pleasure, it's, as always. It's always a pleasure. Always. Oh, quick, oh, real quick. I want a quick shout out. That, not that they'll ever need it. Do you know Ocean Kelly? Yes. Him or they, them, I'll say. I'm not sure, sure, not sure what their pronouns are. That's all I have. But they have started a podcast with uh, Adrian Expression, who is a YouTuber and also a artist. And it is some of the funny... It, there's only like four or five episodes out. I think it's like literally only like three. And it is some of the funniest shit in the world. Fierce. It's so good. Quick shout. I know we're supposed to be pushing no. ourselves. No. Like, they, Fierce. They are so goddamn funny. Go, I love it so much. Go listen. Go listen. Please do yourself a favor. Anyway, please And go. while you're there... <laughs> yeah, you can go uh, subscribe to The Latest and the Gayest. Now, not only on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, but we are now, as of this week... We are uh, burp. Um, we, Disgusting. We are now officially available on Stitcher, Radio Public, and Google Podcasts. So you can pretty much stream us on anywhere that you get your pods. I've never heard of the two of those things, but absolutely. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, go follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at T-L-E-T-G pod to keep up with everything that we're doing yeah and we finally have started posting on our tiktok account yep the one (laughs) it's gonna it's it's only at 248 views so far so if you're out there go go boost us go (laughs) go follow us go viral go follow us on tiktok because that way we can start you know going live it'll be it'll be very fierce diva boots um yeah and follow us on social media. Follow us, uh, subscribe, like, subscribe, rate, review, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You know? Sorry, my brain like wandered for a second. All that good diva fierceness. I'm just thinking about like, do like major political people eat cereal? I'm sure they do. Like, I'm, for some reason, I just thought of like, like I don't if, know. Like if Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is like eating Captain Crunch or something. Yes. Or does Tucker Carlson eat like Cocoa Puffs? Like for some reason, I, I'm certain they don't. I mean, I'd prefer not to hear from Tucker Carlson, but AOC, if you're listening to this. <laughs> I don't think hun- she, but... Hunty Diva. Oh um, what kind of cereal do you eat? No, but like, can, so, can somebody thinking, out there like reach out to AOC and figure out what kind of cereal she eats? I'd love to find I'm just, out. The first time I think about important people eating cereal and I just... I have to have, sorry, my brain worked. Yeah. Also, another random ass question. I have to get off my chest. Okay. So, spider webs. Mm-hmm. Is it like, does it have like DNA in it? Is it like living thing or is it like just like random stuff? From the, from the sp- spidusy? Yeah. Yeah, you know. the spidusy. The spidusy. But you know what I mean? Like, just yeah. Like, if there were spider crimes, no, I, I, if there I were understand. spider crimes, oh my God, I'm dying. If there were spider crimes, could you use the web to like, identify the killer like does the, the spider web have like dna and stuff because like i think if it's just like inanimate object because I, I don't think it's like a living cell but i think it yeah. like has spider component in it i just okay because like it, it's touching you sometimes like you run into a spider web and it's, and like if it has spider stuff in it it would make me feel bad about myself because it's spider stuff on me okay but if it's just like silk and like inanimate object then i'm like okay whatever like that yeah. was that was still kind of like not cool but like yeah. i can live with myself but if there's like if that is like living spider stuff in the spider web it's gonna make me like hate my life hate existing and on that note thank oh, you so much for listening also <laughs> no go, only i want to add on to the end of it go to our link tree oh yeah um Last... by, by the time this episode comes out uh, February will be over, uh, correct? When wait, when's the last day of February? Like in two days, right? Uh, it is on two. Tu- is on Tuesday? Uh, Monday. On Monday. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, February will probably be over by the time this podcast comes out. But you can still go to our link tree and you can still uh, donate and educate yourself on some of the amazing charities that we have there for Black mm-hmm. History Month. Um, also, we will be adding uh, a link in there to figure out how you can help donate 
and help do what you can for all the people in Ukraine right now. Um, if you want to help out, we're going to be posting something in there for you to, it's going to be a bunch of links and, and things for you to, for you to do that. So please donate anything that you can for the, the people of Ukraine right now, because they, they need our help. So of course, anyway, thank you for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye.